Hello, this is Jill Slinker of the Department of Student Programs of the Indiana Association of School Principals. Thank you for agreeing to proctor the Spell Bowl competition. We've updated the proctor instructions for you, and we've updated the process by which you will need to proctor the test, adding an electronic element. Don't worry, it's a very simple update for you as a proctor. The basic proctor's duties include verifying the rosters. There will be a roster at your table when you go to um, do, your, do the competition. And all you'll need to do is to verify that the student who is competing is on the roster. They will sign the bottom of the sheet um, with their name. You can double check from there. You want to maintain decorum. You want to be as, as little of a distraction as possible for the students and your job as a proctor basically is to score the students answer sheets and if there are any irregularities it's your job to bring them to the attention of the procedural chair who will then make the judgment you need to record the score on the computer sheet a score sheet immediately after each question this is not something that you can summarize and do at the end because it is a live scoring event each word is updated as you go. Now, you will be given, and you may reference this probably right now, you will be given an answer sheet, or not an answer sheet. Well, you'll be given an answer sheet, but what I wanna reference right now is the proctor instructions that you were either given earlier or maybe have in front of you at the proctor's meeting today. Um, the proctor may be a principal, a coach, teacher, any other responsible adult. And as each competitor arrives at the competition table, as I said, you put your initials by the speller's name on the roster form. If a student name is not on the team roster form, you need to let the procedural committee know um, so that that person doesn't spell and then get disqualified. If you let the procedural committee know, you can make those changes ahead of time. Um, make every effort to allow the contestants to concentrate. Don't talk or gesture to around the speller from the time the word is pronounced until time is called. Don't attempt to write the spelling words or take notes during the competition. I know as a proctor, I've, you know, I, I always want to challenge myself to see if I can spell the words, but spelling them to yourself um, or writing them down is not allowed. Um, they, can, they can get clues from that. Uh, be sure that all the student requests for repeats are recognized by raising your hand along with the student question, requesting the repeat. But if the MC doesn't see your repeat request and says begin, lower your hand because no repeat can be given then. Um, don't take the score sheet away from the student until time has been called. Allow them every second possible to make any corrections that they want to make. When the timer announces time or the buzzer sounds, all pencils then must be lifted from the paper. The correct spelling of the word will be read by the MC, projected on a screen, and then you make the, um, make the scoring marks make the scoring marks that's what i'm looking for yes you make the scoring marks um if the word is incorrect you place an x on the number of the word and if it is correct leave it um once the paper you know don't mark it completely through the word that makes it difficult um if any challenges have been made just make an x on the number um once the paper sheet has been marked now you'll have a new job Okay, um, you'll need to mark the score on the electronic score sheet. So you will enter this score in the red box. And really that's what the rest of this webinar is about is how to do that. The basics are you enter the score, you give it a capital C if it is correct, a lowercase i if it is incorrect, hit enter and move on. Um, once the official scorekeeper updates all of the scores, then your score sheet will update and it'll keep a running tabulation of the scores that the students have achieved. Now, just a couple of reminders, this is not a handwriting contest, but if a word is not legible, the proctor should mark it as incorrect. 
The student, if he wishes to at the time, may challenge that and you call the procedural committee, you ask for the procedural committee, um, you indicate to the MC that you have a challenge and they'll take care of that, they'll make that judgment, but you make the initial judgment as to whether it can be read or not. Um, be sure that all student challenges are recognized by standing. Um, if a student tells you he believes a word has been misscored, you need to do that. There are no challenges allowed when a student believes there is an alternate spelling that could be used. Um, he can challenge at any time up until the time they sign the score sheet and leave the competition table. So that's all possible. Let's move on to the electronic scoring, scoring itself. This, is, this can be a little bit intimidating when you look at the score sheet, but it's really a simple um, procedure for you. So you will open the Google score sheet um, that will be on the electronic device at your table. You need to click on the tab on the bottom of the screen with the correct team code assigned to the school you're proctoring. If you'll notice here, let's see if I can zoom in on that a little bit for you. If you'll notice here on the bottom of the screen, you have a series of tabs along the bottom. Right now, this score sheet shows that they're locked, but they'll be unlocked for you. And you find the team number that you have been given, and then you will verify that with the score or with the um, name of the team that will be in this section, okay? So once you're on the correct tab, the school's team name and class will appear up here in cells A, that's the section one and two. So the team name should be right here. Um, if you've selected the correct tab, the tab that you've been given, but the name or the class are not correct, you know, they might tell you class one, class two, class three, class four, um, then you need to notify the scorekeeper or the procedural chairperson so that they can get you to the right screen for you to enter your scores. Now, what will happen? The students will, you know, they'll spell each contest word using the paper answer sheet. This is what the paper answer sheet looks like. You should have seen a copy of that already, but the paper answer sheet looks like this. They will put their spelling word right here on the line. They should have a team name and you'll circle the round number as, as you go. Um, they will spell that. The MC will reveal the correct spelling of the word. You'll check the spelling here. If it is right, leave it. If it is incorrect, just put an X through the number. Um, if there are any challenges and we have to change a word and use an alternate word, we've got a couple of extra lines here for you if you need to do the alternate word. A um, couple things that they need to remember, obviously the legibility and you can print or write, but there has to be a clear distinction in whatever you do um, in relation to the size of the first letter in the event of a capital. So if it's supposed to be capitalized and they've written in all caps, but the first letter is not larger than the rest of them, it is going to be, an, it is going to be counted incorrect, okay? So it has to be either the same as the rest of them to show that there is no capital or larger than the rest of them to show that it is. Um, you have to cross T's, they have to cross T's, dot I's and dot J's for them to be counted correct. Um, you also can, you know, can add in the previous team score. It'll talk about a flip chart score, but that is just the score that they get at the end of the round. Um, some schools will still use flip charts. Other schools will use an electronic display, but it's just the current round score that they are referencing there. Um, at the end of each round, Make sure that this score is correct. You need to verify that this score is the same as the electronic score and have everybody sign the sheet. 
not, you know, the student, you must both print and sign your names. Okay, once, once that is done for each word, okay, so after each word that they spell, not after the round, but after each word that they spell, you will enter into the system whether they got it right or wrong, okay? So in the red box, you will enter the score, okay? So you'll do a capital C if the answer is correct and a lowercase i if the answer is incorrect, okay? Nothing will change until the scorekeeper updates the scores, okay? The official scorekeeper for the entire contest updates the scores. And once they do that, once your score is updated, your um, number is actually put in here. So in this round, we've only done two questions. The first one was right, the second one was wrong. The zero turned to a one in the correct box and it gave you a green. So we use you know colors to kind of indicate what's going on. Um, the color remained white. So it changed from red to white, showing that something has been entered like it's supposed to. And then the score turned green if they got the point and it remained a zero if they did not get the point. The round score for that one student, so this would be student number one, would be indicated in the bottom here. Um, total score so far down here in the bottom is one. Once tiebreakers come in, um, then they will be updated automatically as well. You no longer need to worry about um, grading tiebreakers any differently or scoring them any differently than you had done before. That tiebreaker system works automatically for you. Okay, so these sheets have been protected. So the only place you can actually enter anything is in the red box on this. So don't worry about entering something in the wrong spot. It won't let you. You know, it'll pop up with a message saying that you're trying to enter something in a protected cell and it won't let you do it. So you can't really break it. Um, so all you can do is enter it in the red cell. That's where you need to go. Once you've entered your score in the red cell, as I said, you wait for the scorekeeper to update everything and then you move on. Okay, so once the scorekeeper sees that the response has been entered by all of the proctors, and that might take a little bit at the beginning because the computers need to um, access the, you know, the, the Wi-Fi system and do all sorts of things with that. So you may have to be a little bit patient, um, but once he sees that there's a response from everybody, and you may have entered a response and forgotten to hit enter, and it won't register the score. So make sure that after you enter the response, you hit enter so that it will register the score and then you should go on. Um, four things are gonna update, as I said, in the proctor's page, the zero, you know, if you entered it correct, the zero should change to a one, the box will turn green. If you entered an, an incorrect, an I, the box stays white, okay? The round score will update down here. The total score and tiebreaker will update, okay, as well. Um, and if they choose to use an audience screen, we're not gonna worry about that here, but if they choose to use an audience screen, it will also be updated on the audience's screen. So step three, after you've scored each one of the questions of the round is to verify the score sheets and the answer sheets. So you need to check to see that the paper answer, answer sheet has been scored correctly and cross check it with the electronic score sheet and make sure that the same um, entry for each question is on the electronic score sheet as well as on the paper, paper sheet. Make sure those scores match. Then you'll have the captain sign off that he or she agrees with the scoring on the paper sheet and the electronic score sheet. The proctor, that would be you, also does the same. And then at the end of the contest itself, you'll need to click out of the last response box and close the sheet. And that's done. That's all you need to do. So basically, you make sure that the student is, is on the um, roster sheet. 
grade their papers, enter the score into the electronic score sheet, verify that all the scores are correct, click out, and you're done. Thank you for watching this Proctor webinar. Um, you know, if you need to go back and look at it again, feel free to do that. It's always good to have an idea of what you're getting into when you get into the into the competition itself. These kids have worked really hard and we want to give them the best experience possible. Thank you.